Hello, and once again, welcome to my workshop. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a jig to go into a fourth axis. Uh, primarily, uh, I made this jig or designed this jig to hold uh, cylinders of glass or perspex, uh, but it could just as well be wood. Um, this isn't specific for uh, the laser. This could also be used in the CNC rotor fourth axis as well. So it's a very simple process. Uh, I actually made this out of nine millimeter, which is three eighths of an inch, I believe. Um, MDF. It is a very simple jig to, to ma manufacture on the laser and um, I'll be showing you on laser cut 6.1. Uh, we'll design it in laser cut 6.1 so we'll be using that as a CAD system as well and we will cut it out on the laser. There's a few, shall we say, peculiarities of cutting MDF. Uh, it is a, a man-made product and it is extremely uh, smoky and um, <laughs> I would say that MDF has a lot of different types of resins. Uh, when it. the laser cuts through MDF it evaporates the MDF to a gas uh, which is what we see as smoke and a, a nasty smell. Um, and I will tell you now if you purchase a laser, do yourself a very, very big favour. Buy a filtration unit. It has four independent filters, two of which are active carbon filters. Whoever you buy your laser from, purchase one of these as well. Because when a laser strikes the material, it evaporates the material. That means it turns it into gas. We see it as smoke or we, we smell it as a nasty smell. That substance is carcinogenic. Over a long period of time, if you have that floating around your, your workshop, when you're using a laser, you will become seriously ill, if not fatally. So do yourself a favor. If you're considering buying a laser, definitely get one of these as well. Okay, so we're going to start now with laser cut 6.1. Um, and really this jig, all it comprises of is four circles of different size, which we then glue together in pairs. Um, so the first thing we do is we get the circle tool and we draw a circle. Then we get the pick tool up here or highlight tool, come over and click on size. Now the first hole we want is the one in the center. Now this is going to be in the tailstock end so it only needs to be a small one of 12 millimeter. 12.0 by 12.0 and okay. okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to draw all our circles first and then we're going to go and put them in priority order. And I'll explain to you what that is about when we get there. Oh, first of all, let's, um, let's get the highlight tool, highlight this, and we're going to put this straight on one of the squares there like that. Just makes it easier for me to line up afterwards. Now then. So what we're going to do now, we're going to draw a bigger circle and highlight tool, right click, size. Now this one is going to be, let me see, I'm just 
measuring up here. So this is going to be 110 millimeters. So 110 by 110 and there we go and we're going to move this now to the center of there now that is one of our units What I'll do is I'll speed this process up. I'll just fast forward this because really it's much of the same thing as draw several circles and um, then I'll, pri I'll come back and I'll prioritize and show you why I prioritize with So now I have all of my parts uh, made. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fetch them in a little closer to save on material. I'll put this one directly over that one. About a five millimeter gap in between. Just saves our material a little bit. Oh. Okay, so I'm happy there. So now I'm going to put them on different layers. Um, and the reason for that is I, we don't want the outside ones cut first because if we did do that they'd just drop out. So we want the centers cut out first because we don't require those. So what I'm going to do now is put them all on a black layer. Okay so we can actually leave these on, on a black layer because I've got a black layer there and leave these black. So what I'm going to do is choose the outside, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and put them on a blue layer. So what this means is that the whatever comes in, whatever comes in the listing up here first, that's what will be cut first. So now we'll set up the cutting parameters. Now, MDF can be difficult or awkward to cut. Um, and you'll, you'll see that in a minute, because what happens is this very smoky and um, it, the, the smoke and debris does tend to absorb the laser and in doing so make it less powerful. So you have to ramp the power up a bit, I find anyway. Um, let me see, 8 millimeters a second, that should be okay actually. Uh, now, this is striking the arc then as it were, this is the initial start of the laser. Now, 90% on my machine is 100 watts. Now, whatever you do, what you will need to do is find out exactly what your machine um, outputs in relation to the input of percentage 
on your computer. You can do that by using uh, a amp meter. Now, if you watch the amp meter, uh, you must never let it go over 30 milliamps. Okay, because at 38 milliamps, it's, it's putting out 100 watts. Uh, if you go over that, you overdrive the laser and you will shorten, greatly shorten the life of your laser. Okay, so full power to start, that punches a hole through the material. Now, for the running, for the cut, I'll, I, I'm going to leave it at 85, maximum and minimum power. I'm going to say, okay. Calculate that, which takes just but a minute, and blue layer, exactly the same, it's already preset. And we're going to say OK for that. OK, so uh, when I start the laser up, I will then download or transfer that file to the laser. OK, the lasers normally have uh, an extraction system which extracts out of the back, out through here. Um, with our particular model, um, we have a v another vent in the back which allows air into the plenum inside here. So air is drawn up through this uh, table and then across. It's also drawn up at the front and across uh, and evacuates then all the debris and smoke. Um, but what I personally uh, do is, now this is black mole steel. Just standard black mold steel is very flat, very straight, and clean. Do not use anything aluminium inside on your bed. If you have an aluminium bed, get rid of it. You shouldn't have an aluminium bed at all, because aluminium is very, very reflective. It will reflect the laser up to about 98% of the power. It can be very, very harmful. So if you have, if your laser that you have purchased has an aluminium bed of any sort, get rid of it. There, shouldn't, there should be nothing but steel inside here. And not stainless steel either. Black steel. Now then, so what I do, uh, this, this honeycomb is actually steel as well. It's magnetic. It is actually magnetic. Um, it's coated so it doesn't, doesn't rust. Um, these machines were designed by engineers that know exactly how a laser operates or should operate or should be operated. Um, unfortunately, the ma vast majority of lasers that you can purchase off eBay are not worth half the money that you pay for them. And they are certainly not put together or designed by credible engineers. And you can quote me on that. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do, because the debris and smoke from MDF is a great amount, we need to evacuate it quickly. And there's an added feature. So we have a panel here at the front, the back, and there's one at that side and one that side that you can remove to put material in, which is larger than the bed. Now, it requires a key, so what I do, unlock and remove it. Just the front one, it 
this is to give added airflow although here on the front we have got a substantial grill to allow air to come in to flow across the material to evacuate the uh, debris as an added feature to increase the evacuation process of the material because don't forget the smoke will absorb the laser light and dull your laser or it might even prevent it from cutting all the way through so if you remove this panel which is quite safe to do so because when this is closed no harmful rays can come out at all incidentally while we've got this cover off I'll point out this is where you plug the fourth axis in right there okay so what I'm going to do now this piece of MDF is actually the full size it's a 600 by 900 which is the actual operation of operating template of this machine but what I'm going to do to, to maximize the airflow because don't forget the air comes up through here it doesn't go down through okay to maximize the airflow I'm just I'm going to put this sheet through this way oh another another feature I'll show you I use these these again are magnetic but you get one off <laughs> okay so there's a magnet on the base they're just little standoffs it just gives you an air gap underneath because when the the laser cuts through and you have the air blast from the nozzle blowing the material through it's got somewhere to escape um, and it's preferable to allow the debris then to condense onto this metal and collect here rather than fill your your filters up so that's why another reason I use this so we'll put this in here nice and square and this is in here without removing the back panel it's got an identical panel right at the back it's just sat up against it uh, so now I'll turn the laser on and put the the file over and we'll set the zero position and we'll run and cut this out right so the first thing we need to do now is we're going to set the Z height with the automatic Z height setting tool um, this machine does it all automatically uh, and then we'll set our zero position uh, in the work and we'll cut these out I think we'll set the Z down first okay so all we do is put this steel plate directly underneath the nozzle on the back side of the nozzle there is a proximity sensor and that will very accurately position the nozzle uh, a set 9.5 millimeters above the surface of the material so here we go that now is precisely nine millimeters so then we're going to track over the the X and Y uh, and put it into a position where we close to where we think the beginning of the program will be and then we'll do a test to see whether we are in a rough proximity of the material 
So to set the zero point or the start of the um, the work, now it's a very simple process. It's a very simple process of just press enter, enter, and now that's logged in and locked. So now to see whether that program that we have just written lies totally in that material, we're going to do a test which is simply this. And it does. So now we are absolutely fine to press start and cut this. You'll notice that uh, although I've got the the uh, door open, 99% of the smoke is actually being carried away over towards the back of the plenum then. And you can see now the smoke going down through. Uh, and I'm in no danger at all. Um, but that is my, what I'm doing. Uh, I am not condoning operating the machine with the door, the door open. Um, it is necessary for me to do this. Uh, it's a very calculated um, thing that I'm doing. Um, this is to enable you to see exactly what it is. This is quite, MDF is quite difficult uh, material to cut because it's a very fine line into the debris bursting into flames and uh, damaging the work on the underside and not uh, bursting into flames. Uh, we've just about got it right uh, because there is no flame in underneath the material and um, it's looking to be a reasonable cut. You'll see some, some um, smoking on the top surface. This is unavoidable really with MDF unless I put a mask on. And when I say put a mask on, I mean masking tape and cut through that. Uh, this is a simple uh, jig to hold uh, material. So in this case, it's not necessary. So that uh, did that without And they are actually all cut out, which is exactly what we wanted. So now we'll retract the uh, the gantry out the way. In actual fact, I'll take it home to the datum. Let it do it automatically. So that's that's it. We've cut our parts out. So now we'll uh, assemble. <coughs> Three, two, one. Okay. So here's our. Perspex actually, it's um, acrylic. It looks just like glass. It sounds a bit like glass, but it's actually acrylic. It's very good acrylic too. Okay, so this is simply put together by putting this over the nose of the 
chuck and opening the jaws out. Just firmly press it. And then this one fits onto the, the end of this. This has got a bearing on it to allow it to turn freely. And what happens is this fits in here so it holds it nice and square. And this open mouth fits in here. Like Oop. simply like this. So just push that up to the chuck, and then this just screws up. You don't have to be over tight with this, just firm like that. Press it firm, lock that up. Just make sure this is firm, it doesn't rotate separately from this, and there you go. And now this is set for the laser to, to for us to zero the laser on here, and for the laser to cut our design on the outside of this vase. Um, obviously the bed needs to be lowered down about so far and then I will zero this over. Now that will be the next uh, laser video. Okay, so I've split this video up into two uh, because you, you know you may want to see uh, how to put a program together to etch on a uh, in a fourth axis with a, a laser um, and some of you actually are more interested in seeing how the jig is made. Very simple jig to do a, a project like this. So that will be the next laser video. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you would like to subscribe to my channel and um, press like and come and drop in and see me again. There's no 250 videos on you know, both combined channels, so laser channel and um, my CNC routing and wood turning channel. So uh, I think there's something there for everybody. And um, now I'll say again, but whoever you buy your laser from, buy a filtration system, a good one, because you will end up being seriously ill. Now that is, the, you can read about that on the internet. Uh, don't take my word for it, but I'm telling you, it's quite a serious um, concern within the laser community that uh, people buy a laser and they run it in their homes and over a period of time them or one of their family members become seriously ill. These are not a toy. It's fine to have as a hobby or a business in your home if you have the right equipment. So thank you for joining me and pop in and see me again sometime. Bye for now.